What is a torque wrench? How's it going guys? It's Jake with Adventure GT. Today, we're installing wheel spacers. I'm gonna put them on the car, do a little unboxing for you guys, and hopefully get that perfect off-road stance. These were bought on Amazon from Stance Magic, and shout out to the Gung Fu for this video idea. So there you go, bro. There's a little shout out for you. Little comment card. Happy with purchase. Light instruction manual. Qualified technician. We're qualified, right? I mean, you guys might have seen too some really bad things that have happened from poorly installed wheel spacers. There we go. Uh, these come in silver or black and I opted for the black ones. And also you wanna make sure you get uh, hub centric wheel spacers because we have vibration problems enough as is with a lifted vehicle. So you're gonna need that little lip in there to help seat the new onto the old hub, onto your wheels to avoid getting uh, road vibration going on. So, all right, let's get to it. First things first. So another reason I went with these wheel spacers from uh, Gung Fu was because they got a 4.6 review on Amazon. Uh, they're also aluminum and the Baja is heavy enough as is without needing the extra weight. Um, but one of the things that some of the people were talking about uh, in the reviews were saying that the factory lug nuts uh, were too short once it was mounted on the hubs, so they couldn't secure the rims. So that might be worth looking into. If you've got aftermarket lug nuts, then you're probably set. Um, I'm using uh, these locking lug nuts from Gorilla Automotive. They're super deep as is. And if you're interested in getting a set of these two, uh, I'll go ahead and link them in the description. It is extremely important that you get this mounted exactly flush with your rotor. And I'm gonna be using the supplied lug nuts on the existing studs already. And another thing that they also say in the instructions is to retorque your spacers after 25 to 50 miles. With adding wheel spacers, you're, you're changing a lot of different variables. So this is one thing that I'm gonna extremely recommend that after 25 to 50 miles, you do go back and retorque your wheels because you're bolting your wheel to this spacer. Okay, so if you're bolting the wheel to your rotor, you know it's all secured as is, but this is one thing where you don't wanna play around you don't need your wheels to fall off. Another fact about wheel spacers, uh, these bolts are pressure sunk into the aluminum casting from the factory, but they are not driven in per se, you know, uh, lug into an axle. So by the time you torque your wheels off the first time and start driving around, uh, these studs could shift, change, or spin on you, changing them completely. To fully seat them, uh, you're gonna need to uh, yeah, it's torqued down properly. Or you might have seen in George's lift kit video how we use two, two nuts to really uh, sink those studs into the, the spacer top hat. It's kind of the same thing with these. You have to use these lug nuts to get to sink them properly. Um, so there's not a whole lot of danger from using wheel spacers. The reason I am only going one inch or 25 millimeters of space is because you're putting a lot of extra stress on your wheel bearings. Uh, a lot of people have said they've gone a little bit bigger than an inch, but you start going bigger than this, you're gonna start wearing out your wheel bearings extremely fast. So this 19 millimeter impact socket won't fit. Just giving you guys a slight heads up that some of your tools might not fit, but these are 19 millimeter, which is perfect because it says in the instructions not to use impact sockets, or not to use an impact to put these on. They say go off with the manufacturers when torquing your wheel spacers. So uh, from the factory, Subaru says 70 to 80 foot pounds on the lug nuts. So 
let's do that. Do a couple turns each one before we go in for the final torque settings. Twerked. There she's all done, completely torqued on, completely seated. So now we're gonna put our tires on. These are the factory size tires, 225-60R16. Uh, the off-road set is 215-65R16. I'm gonna show you guys what they're both like mounted onto the hub and what it does for angle because something to be careful about is where these tires are gonna sit in your arch. Got both tires mounted, so uh, let's go for a drive. Mm -hmm. Cranked all the way to one side. Uh, yeah, buddy. I'm not touching anything, but... <laughs> Woo! I cranked all the way to one side, start getting close to my, <laughs> my uh, skid plate. Definitely not a problem. In back, let's go check the other side. Ooh. Uh oh. With my one size bigger tires. Uh, holy smokes. <laughs> That's pretty tight. I think with these wheel spacers, I would not want to go one size bigger without running into uh, running into that gap. Well, one size taller. Or you do what every Subaru enthusiast does and you get out the big f***ing hammer. This is what the rear wheels look like without using the spacers. Just to give you a better idea of the soon to be changes in appearance. With that completed, I'm going to quickly install the rest of the spacers and make the change from fuel saver to off-road settings. All right, that's all there is to it. Got the back wheels put on, wheel spacers installed. ka -chow. So, now I'm gonna go for a little test drive, and then drive 25 to 50 miles to work and back, or however far that is. Retorque the wheels and get back to you guys and see how everything's doing. So it's the next day and I've driven approximately 55, 56 miles. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip this tire off, retorque the wheel spacers, retorque the wheel, and uh, yeah. Good. So that one actually moved quite a bit, which is another reason why you need to retorque your wheels after 50 miles, because we are initially seating those pressure fit studs themselves into the casting. So it might not have been a problem at all, might have been a problem down the road, but we're not gonna take chances. So we're gonna retorque everything, and I might even retorque these a little bit later, or after a couple more miles just to for my own peace of mind, really. All right, guys, all tires torqued down to spec and everything's looking good. I didn't notice anything on my 50 mile drive. No extra noises, no tire vibration. So I am absolutely thrilled with the way these one inch spacers look. 
Uh, it really brings the car together, gives it that off-road stance, makes it look a little bit more aggressive than the all-terrain tires actually do. So I think they're worth it. I think it's pretty great. Um, with that being said, uh, I think that's going to be a wrap for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And this is Jake with Adventure GT, and I'll catch you later.